Oh my god. There's so much oh. Elden Ring to talk about. Holy crap, Lois. Yeah. This is insane. Welcome to Press Start, everybody. We have a big, big day for you. We have the three biggest Elden Ring fans on the planet here to talk about Elden Ring. No one here has sharp feelings or questions or, you know, ideas about glaring issues they saw in that gameplay we got. None of that here. We are apologists of the From Software Bible, and we're here to talk about that and some other stuff today. How y'all doing? I'm good. good. Yeah. Good. Are you ready to lay down your Lots life really for the greatest game to come out in the last 50 years? <laughs> <laughs> the best thing since... Uh, what's a big thing gaming people care about? Sliced bagels. Sliced bagels. <laughs> I don't know. We got Elden Ring stuff to talk about, though, which I'm very happy about. But to my understanding, you two have some concerns with what we saw today. So we're gonna break it down for y'all. Cami, why don't you why don't you kick us off with what 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 were we given as a little a appetizer into this world? I mean, it was 15 minutes completely full pretty much of gameplay uh everything we saw was um like from pc footage lachlan is just gonna steal the show this whole time i can feel it um <laughs> yeah you tell him lock um yeah 15 minutes of gameplay from the pc uh a big hefty mixture of stuff so basically i just wrote down everything major that we kind of saw so i don't know if you just if we want to just go through that sort of in order that they showed it to us hey that works for me why don't you kick it off for us with the first one luke probably the the big one people are thinking <clears throat> about yeah so the most notable thing is that they're mixing open world elements with dungeons and then they are uh, well there goes your passy and then they're uh allegedly also going to have classical dark souls levels um in the form of the big castles that we kind of saw scattered throughout the map which are not the dungeons the dungeons are specifically like underneath the map they uh sprawl out from there and they're separate from sorry my cat's freaking out as well um they're separate from the rest of the uh the map so you'll have the bosses which have sort of their end destination um, in a castle or some big set piece. And then you have the dungeons, which sprawl out in their own way and have bosses contained within. And then you have the open world element, the big open fields that we saw so much of. And those, based on what we saw, it would suggest they will also have their own bosses and many bosses kind of strewn throughout. So it's a big shift, um, even coming from Sekiro. It's a big shift. Exciting stuff. And now what Cammy is most excited about. Don't worry, guys. Um, I'll take the I'll take the third one on this list. But Cammy, you uh um, you you had some concerns, I hear, with uh our yeah. trusty steed that we'll the have. Trusty steed acts like a kangaroo. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> like I can't I can't wrap my brain around it. I want to, like, before we started filming, me and Jacob were talking about this, and, like, I've only just started playing Bloodborne, and I haven't played any other From Software game. So I realised that, you know, I might go, this looks stupid, and then anyone who's played a From Software game before will be like, no, that's what the games are like. So take everything I say with a pinch of salt. But to me, it just looks ridiculous. Like when that horse just flew through the air, I just, it looks stupid to me. But, you know, Jacob reliably informs me that it is a gameplay choice and I should shut, oh, there's a baby in the room, but I should shut the F up. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I really like it as a gameplay choice because I was saying the, one of the things you run into most, like you think Assassin's Creed, 
Odyssey or you think even The Witcher 3, when you have your horse and you have to like go up a mountain or like a steep thing, like a lot of the time there's a bunch of trial and error trying to get up there and having to deal with like finding the right path or climb over rocks. But if you, they basically designed around that to take that out of the game, which I'm very much for. It's one of my. I least... think Luke disagrees with you. He got He's up left. and left. He's so pissed. But Who I mean, are you, Jacob? That's one thing I really like. I like it when they. The, that's one thing From Software kind of does in the name of their games. It's what a lot of people do. A lot of game developers is they'll you know craft the world to fit the kind of gameplay they want to make it because Assassin's Creed can kind of get away with having stupid filler when it comes to, to traversing things because you can climb mm. up a lot of mountain faces but in this game it seems like they're cutting out a lot of that garbage where it's like yeah you don't have to worry about like spamming to get up a mountain or whatever you can just well one hop up and one over. thing i will say like you brought up assassin's creed odyssey what i couldn't unsee with this was specifically in the fate of atlantis dlc for assassin's creed odyssey they have these huge like all the the big buildings and temples and things that you're exploring on are on these like pillars with huge cliffs on either side and you can free climb up it but it's tedious takes like a minute and a half to get to the top um so instead they just put these portals on the bottom and the top so you can just fast travel and zip between the top and bottom instead of free climbing it which to me is always a bit of a red flag when you introduce things like that because in a way you're admitting that traversing it isn't enjoyable like naturally traversing it isn't enjoyable with the systems you've put in place it's why i admired red dead redemption 2 so much because they had fast travel in that game but like most people weren't actively using it it wasn't something that was a uh an active gameplay system it was there but it wasn't something that you were expected to use a ton whereas in games like fallout or even skyrim and oblivion those games you're fast traveling like it's nothing it has no impact whatsoever so for me it's a bit of a red flag i understand why kimmy would say it looks ridiculous i don't think it's immediately dismissing for me because um hopefully it just leads to highly varied terrain uh that's very vertical but what i don't know and what they didn't show us was whether or not you're able to do that same maneuver off of your mount um, or if it's just while you're on your mount because if you have to be on the mount to jump it i can see some ridiculous situations where you're being like chased or where you're trying to escape something and you have to summon your mount just to jump up a cliff and then hop off and then keep running or go wherever else you need to, which could be a little stupid. Hey man, if but you these, gotta, these points, if you got to jump up a mountain, you're not playing the game, right? I don't think you got to take yeah, that conflict get, head on. You need on. to get good. Yeah. You need to get good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's keep going through these. I'm going to bow out again. I, I can still hear you guys, but um, let's keep going through these. And uh, then I want to share all of our thoughts. I have some. Well, good. Well, I get, uh, I got to talk about a neat one, a big old dragon coming down for a dragon oh. fight, a fight with a dragon. There's probably going to be a lot of dragons. So take this dragon with a grain of salt. Cause That's it's cool. probably the worst dragon. There's probably a hundred thousand dragons. <laughs> I, I liked how it looked. You can fight it on your horse. Yeah. Fight it with your sword. That's pretty cool. What's up next on this list? I mean, this was, again, we were talking before we started filming, and I, I said I watched the live stream while I, while I was live streaming. So I had people in chat reacting who were much more familiar with these games than I was. So when this big pot came on screen, I was like, oh, strange. And everyone in the chat was like, it's Pop Bro. It's a Pop Boy. Oh, my God. I have no idea. I have no idea what this is. I just know people seemed very excited about it. 
So yeah. I wanted to mention it. I'll be honest, I couldn't tell you what the hell people are excited about with it. I think it's a neat character design. I don't know I what think, the lore is. I think from looking, again, briefly, it seems to be one of these like things that crop up in a few different From Software games. So people were like, ah, oh, it's like familiar. They've included it. They've bought it over. Oh. Cool. I think. I just, I wanted to throw it in there in case it was a big deal. To I don't. I don't think it there. is. I think that's just from software fans. When people are there, they like their shit. You man. know, <laughs> there's some diehard. I love from software stuff, but I don't know like the deep lore or whatever. Uh, but yeah, Please Luke, tell us the deep lore of the pop bro. The deepest lore. No, my my understanding is like Cammy was saying. It's uh, sort of a callback to um, a lot of characters that they have in different forms that kind of follow through. It's just like a cool little nod. It's like, I don't know if there's a direct comparison to it, but uh, it's it's not as on the nose to say that it's like in the same universe, but they have a lot of characters that share the same um, like broad design, which makes you think like there are nods to previous games without it being like the same exact character spawning multiple franchises and, and series. So I don't know. I didn't think it was that amazing. I thought it was cute, but I didn't think it was anything to write home about. Well, what did you think of that sweet, sweet map system we got there? For me, this is actually the, we'll talk more about it when we're discussing our overarching opinions, but this, um, to me, they, they have a lot of systems that they showed off, like the beacons, which are very reminiscent of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which to me says that they're trying to take nods from that game and how the uh, exploration worked there, where you look out, and I think that's why they have such verticality, because they're trying to capture the same basic um, sense of exploration that was in that game, that that game did so well, by effectively having verticality so huge vistas and valleys when you're at the top of the vista you can look out see something that looks interesting mark it on your map and there will be this huge beacon that guides you as you travel to that location and allows you to follow through even when you're in forests or in the valley or climbing up whatever um so to me that's a good thing you know people are like it's just a ripoff not like you can use systems and implement them well like fallout was not the first franchise to do the vats system um there were previous games that had systems like that that froze time allowed you to target body parts and use action points to do so but they did it very well and now that's a staple of that franchise so i have no issue with games borrowing from others uh especially if it's a good mechanic like nobody i think will argue that you should avoid using mechanics if they work well you know um so it's interesting to me we'll see how it actually is employed because what we've seen with other games that have attempted to take nods from breath of the wild is it's a lot easier said than done like the team that did breath of the wild are among i mean they have the some of the best developers on the planet working there and it's no coincidence that that turned out great but for a less experienced team as far as open world exploration games are concerned it might not work out as well which is again we bring up the idea of skepticism and not just immediately concluding that this is a phenomenal game that you should absolutely buy on day one um or pre-order like healthy skepticism is good especially because like jacob was saying this is very different from what from software has done before so there's I think justifiable reason for concern. Um, but we'll, we'll keep going. We'll keep going before I. Well, we'll move on to stand. another gameplay system. Crafting. Ooh. Ooh. We love crafting. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, I dislike crafting in most parts. I feel like it's just, it's the easiest goddamn system in the world to work out. That's why every game has it. Where it's like, you can find sticks, tape, and a rock. That's your bow and arrows. 
you can buy them, but you can also just pick up sticks and make them. I'm not saying it's bad. I just think it's easy. Uh, so it's a fine addition, but it's not one I'm like hyped about. It's just something that comes with the territory of open world games. Gotta be able to craft well, some. Well, and more than anything, one thing you'll see, and you've already seen as we've discussed a lot of these things, and we're only like halfway through this list, there's a lot of things they've added, which are added exclusively for the purpose of encouraging the player to explore, which previously was something people did in like Bloodborne and Dark Souls and Sekiro. They explored the levels and got to know them really well. Like I know Central Yarnum like the back of my hand. Um, but it was because you had to learn them if you were to progress through them. You had to explore every nook and cranny. Whereas with this open world variation of what they're trying to do, it's much more about exploring for the sake of exploring, not exploring for the sake of survival or just mere progression which is an interesting shift. Once again, like I, I think people are expecting this to just feel like Dark Souls, but in open world, and it's not that simple. It really isn't. I think it's going to just feel like an open world attempt at a Breath of the Wild clone with some other stuff kind of sprinkled in, um, where everything's very open-ended. Beautiful map, but very open-ended, do whatever you want, wherever you want. Uh, with Dark Souls difficulty and combat sprinkled in, but not even Dark Souls because it's not really an action RPG by everything we've seen. It looks like it's much closer to Sekiro in that it's mostly ability and gear focused, which again is done so you have a reason to explore the map because you'll find abilities and gear that you won't find otherwise. So again like people who are expecting this to just be dark souls 3 or dark souls 4 in an open world i think might be disappointed because everything they're adding in here is done to like further the implementation of something that is antithetical to what dark souls was built on which was intricately designed complicated levels and that doesn't seem to be the main focus here doesn't mean it'll be bad and We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but like, it's very different. It's very different. It's the next step for From Software. They got to learn to incorporate the old with the new, those crazy kids. And hey, speaking of some of the old, we've got summons and multiplayer. Fuck it, we'll, we'll lump them together. Yeah. It works exactly like every other From Software game. Except I'm guessing it probably will be less convoluted. Probably a lot more straightforward. No, like Hopefully. having to no having to kill a random character to get a cracked red eye orb. <laughs> like <laughs> or following weird guides. I'm guessing they simplify that a bit. Yeah. No, they've said a lot um, that they're trying to streamline certain things. Not necessarily to make it easier, but to encourage players to engage with it, which is something we'll talk about when we get to catacombs and dungeons and things. So I'll, I'll hold off for now. All good. Yeah, but the multiplayer summons, always good. <clears throat> we also, we, we saw a boss fight with a horse fella, horse man. Love the design. Horse. Love the horse. Love the armor. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks cool it looks cool and it makes me want you to go can fight tell it someone who hasn't played many from software games at all wrote this list yeah but like, i mean what are you supposed to call <laughs> it's like if you call well, by his real name it's like yeah. oh that's that's gregor destroyer and cruncher of rock and world and then you have to go on like a tangent explain his deep lore and people are like wow why'd you tell me that and they're like i don't know fight him my hope is by the time that this game comes out, I will have at least finished Bloodborne, if not some other From Software games. So I won't be totally clueless. Because right now I'm like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. I don't know. I like it. I think you gotta, I mean, it looks cool, right? Oh, it looks cool, yeah. Yeah, that's like 90% of the battle with From Software stuff. 
at this Post point. Post Mobile's fine. <laughs> they've, they've figured out, they've got a very nice, tight gameplay system a lot of people like. Just make it look cool. That's all, we, that's, all we, that's all I want, really. Just make it look awesome. And hey, speaking of awesome, no fall damage, baby. How many times did you fall in Dark Souls and die? All of them? Probably, but that's because you fell off the map. So... No, nothing was more annoying than having to, like, jump roll out of something. Like, in Bloodborne, there's a lot of spots, especially when you really tighten up your runs and are getting down to, like, sub five hours. Like, a lot of it is about taking huge leaps, and you have to time a roll out of the jump within, like, a frame to minimize damage. And it was always, like, really tedious, but it was just part of what you had to learn to to get really fast and, and good at these Dark Souls and Bloodborne games, the Soulsborne games. So to see now that they're just getting rid of it, it's almost like good, but oh, you know. We like the toy. It looked weird. This yeah. just made it so it looked weird. Yeah. Again, this I don't is think one it looked weird things. at all. <laughs> the horse thing looked a little weird, it's but this okay. is what, yeah, that's what it looks like. It's because in my brain, I like saw a guy take such a a drastic fall and be absolutely fine. At least it's not like in Assassin's Creed Odyssey where you have fall damage until you reach level 25 and then there's no explanation given. You just no longer take fall damage. Yeah. Yeah. Like one time. No, you go on. Right. I was just gonna say, I think it's probably a good idea from gameplay. It's just, it just, it looked weird to my brain. My brain was going, he should be injured, and then he wasn't. That's all. I think mostly it's probably they've been like testing the game, and with all of these cliffs and ledges and all the verticality, it just doesn't like you would feel too unfair to just slip off an edge and die, especially in like a complicated or or a hard fight, um, it just wouldn't be fun, you know, which I'm glad to see because for so long, I think fans of From Software games just argued, you know, the get good type thing where it's this masochistic Manichaean self-flagellation where all of the pain and suffering you come across in these games is part of the, the journey and you can't criticize it because then that just shows your lack of appreciation for what the developers are trying to teach you. When in reality, it's just not fun. Hopefully, and what it seems to be is that Hidetaka Miyazaki and the team at FromSoft are realizing, okay, we don't have to have the game be like miserable and for damage to be dealt in a, what feels an unfair way for the game to be good. You can have damage dealt um for mistakes the players make but if it's something stupid like slipping off a ledge or being pushed off by some giant creature and then you slide off this ledge onto this plateau below like you shouldn't instantly die for something out of your control which i appreciate it's good it's almost like it's good game design Woo! That doesn't happen too much in Dark Soul games. A lot of the time, people forgive bad design from software games. I feel like just because they're like, "Oh well, it's supposed it's hard. What do you want? It's Dark Souls." But it's good to see them actually taking steps to you know limit the rage quitting. I feel like that comes with a lot of these games, and you can kind of see that yeah. in Sekiro too, where they're trying to back it yeah. up like, "Okay, you can." stealth around we get people who just run by these guys so let's make it so you can you know have some extra benefit to it i oh, for like re- it for real like absolutely and I'm, I'm glad to see that they're doing it like i said it's just i think it's done a lot of damage to the community or, or perhaps it's the reason the community has grown i'm not sure but i i think for a long time people just assumed that if something happened that made you feel bad while playing a from software game that was part of the design like that was part of the journey of dark souls and bloodborne and demon souls so if you felt bad because something happened even if it wasn't your fault even if it wasn't fair as far as gameplay is concerned 
that was part of the experience when that shouldn't be the case. Like in the Chalice Dungeons and Bloodborne, there are so many hitbox issues, things that happen that just aren't fair, where you clearly should have hit the creature, but the hitbox isn't aligned right, so you miss them, and then their AOE blasts you way out of where it should be. Things like that that just aren't don't feel fair. Um, people just said, well, that's part of the experience. That's part of the journey when it shouldn't be. Like Jacob was saying, you can call out things that aren't good and still appreciate the games and still think they do a lot of stuff that's good, but they're not perfect. You know, it's a, it's the same thing we see with like Death Stranding and Hideo Kojima, like the diehard fans of Death Stranding that are willing to forgive every shortcoming and every bad choice and explain it away um like i would i would show you but it's tangent to the point so i i won't i got a message a series of dms on instagram that i kid you not easily could be a 10 page single spaced paper somebody had <laughs> typed it up in a word doc and copy and pasted it into this dm and sent it in like 50 parts explaining why every bit by bit point I made in my breakdown of the director's cut of Death Stranding was wrong and incorrect. And most of it was just that I didn't understand what they were trying to do. Like the crappy driving, it's because they're trying to show that, you know, you can't rely on technology to survive in a terrible oh, situation. Oh yeah. Okay. We should... like, or it's just a crappy, like <laughs> we should touch on system. this too, because people it's the dumbest thing you see it with from software you see it with hell you see it with naughty dog a little bit you see it with bethesda yeah. and especially hideo kojima when things are bad in a game it doesn't mean the entire game is bad because i i hate hate so much about death stranding and i still love me playing some death stranding from time to time i'll jump into that but I hate some parts of it. There's some garbage mm -hmm. in there. Just like Fallout 4. Fallout 4 has a bunch of garbage in it. But I can still enjoy it. The fact that people like think to themselves, oh, if someone has a differing opinion about a game or someone doesn't or like this aspect. Or a part of the game. Or a singular <laughs> part of the game. They're like, it's a 9 out of 10. It'd be a 10, but I didn't like this. And they're like, fuck you, idiot. That doesn't... Mind your business. Enjoy what you enjoy. Believe it or not, Hideo Kojima is going to keep making games because we all keep buying them. If you buy his game and you're like, this sucks. Why is he making games? Because you bought it. That's plain and simple. Yeah. So you got nothing no, to worry about. Just mind your business. Yeah. And the, the reason we bring up critiques is because hopefully the developers will hear them and, and learn from them and at the very least consider them as they design whatever's next. Like I know for a fact, because I've had the developers reach out to me, a lot of people at Ubisoft watch my critiques of Ubisoft games, like things that I said and argued for when Origins came out were addressed. And even some suggestions that I and many other people made were present in subsequent games like Odyssey and Valhalla and the DLC um, there within. So like we bring these things up, not because we're just trying to be annoying or pessimists and uh like argue for the sake of arguing we're doing it to try and provide constructive feedback and when you have a platform and people that watch that actually can go somewhere sure if you're just like hanging out with your friends and you're just you know shitting on absolutely everything everybody loves just saying oh well that game actually sucks and is terrible then maybe you're just being kind of an ass but for us like we're trying to to raise points to try and I, I guess bring about change or at least adjustments to things that aren't good and uh, that could be improved. But uh, yeah, we, we agree on that, Jacob and Cami. I assume we just had to get, we had to get it out of the way because it, it's so hey, annoying. from software is in that kind of category sometimes. And I love every from software game I've played. It's just like arcane. I love them. So much. I fucking love them so goddamn much. But that's the thing. You can see in this 15 minutes with Elden Ring, a lot of it is expanding. A lot of it is changing. Some of it for the better. Some of it for, you know, it's up in the air still if it'll be good. TBD, yeah. TBD. Yeah. But they're also, they're bringing stuff back with it. And hey, 
that you can't have Dark Souls, speaking of bringing stuff back, you can't have that without some catacombs and some dungeons. And boy, oh boy, did we get our fill of that in the Elden Ring gameplay trailer. They look like the Skyrim ones. Yeah. That's what well, that's, this, yeah. So what I will say, I've been waiting to bring this up until we got to this point in the list. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to hold off. Let's get through the rest of the list and then I'll discuss it. Because it ties together with like three or four different things we've addressed uh... in the list. And I want to bring it together. Because I'm, I'm making like, I'm actually in the middle of editing it. Like a 16 minute video explaining what I'm about to address when we get to the end of the list. So ah. we'll, we'll get through the list and then I'll do that. Keep going. I'm going to just check on him real quick. Well, good, good. I'll be right some back. nice catacombs, yeah. some nice dungeons. Uh, yeah. Not well, a whole lot enough. you can do crazy design wise. I'm sure they will nail it. First good look at melanoma Melina. Yeah. Uh, it's a neat, cool design. It's looks great. Yeah. It's good stuff. Something that's uh, goddamn awesome. That castle, holy crap. Oh, yes. This is like one of the bits that I feel like I can actually jump in on and be like, I can talk about this. It looked really fucking good. It really, uh, holy crap. That Thank design, you, that's my bit. You may carry on they're, now. They're so good at like that. Not even gothic. I don't even know what style to call it. Just those gigantic, grand, dilapidated castles. It's it's so nice. Makes it's me happy kind of to look at. It, like old school. I thought that was the best looking moment in the whole gameplay bit. Because there was one scene earlier, one scene, you know, one moment earlier on where it was the character standing up somewhere very, very tall, looking out over the world, I guess. It was around when they're talking about the map. And at that moment, I thought, ah, I'm not sure this doesn't look all that great like all the trees in the fog are just the same tree copy and pasted and it's really obvious and i was like mm. but then it showed this bit with the castle and i was like okay yeah take this notes is... ubisoft from software knows where to put their attention they might have yeah. like some bland looking stuff here and there but when it comes to those castles when it comes to those bosses those that is designs very nice Holy Very crap. nice. And I guess there's a bunch of different ways to approach now. A bunch is probably a strong term. Stealth or not stealth. You have these like little spirit guys that can help you when you fight. Different types of combat. I'm excited to see how that plays out. Uh, I've it always been straight sword knight build. I never go for anything too crazy. Uh, but we'll see how that plays in. Maybe they'll like incentivize you to like branch out into the magical areas or something like that to get you to try new things. Okay. At the very least, I guess it's offers different playthroughs. Oh yeah. That like you could do one with one build, one with a different one. That's definitely a positive. And Hey, speaking of positives, okay. last thing we got to see big boss, man. I don't know if, big uh, boss, with many hands, arms, much yeah. grabby. Yeah. What a great design. Yeah. Again, looks so cool. It looks so it nice. It does look cool. I'll be honest, I barely remember because it showed a bit of like the fighting the boss. I barely remember that because I all I remember is the design. And I I think that's a good thing. Oh yeah. When that design that design fucking so <laughs> that design sticks with me so much. Yeah, I shouldn't be cursing fine. so much. No, it's fine. It's passion. I, I really like what we saw here in this little showcase that they did. Uh through and through. But hey, uh, maybe you're a little bit curious about uh, what you're gonna what what, what bang say. for your buck. How much should buck we, are you gonna bang? Should we run through the additions before Luke wants to talk for I don't know how long about overarching opinions? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what that is. <laughs> but sure, yeah, we could go through these like real quick. An hour long video about it. Additions: the basic, uh, fifty pounds, sixty dollars normal um if you pre-order it you do get a couple of bonuses uh you get a digital guide with this quote useful information to help players as they enter the lands between um and you also get a gesture as yet unknown but i don't know i'd like to think it's something really funny like just a, 
uh, fingers up in the middle of fight or something. It would amuse me. I, I don't know. Uh, digital deluxe version. £65, $80. Adds an art book and a soundtrack. Collector's edition, $190. They haven't said the price for elsewhere yet, but just convert it to your currency. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same. Uh, Nine-inch statue of Melina. Steelbook case. 40-page art book and digital soundtrack. The premium collectors goes up to $260. Everything that's in the normal collectors and a one-to-one scale replica of Melina's helmet. And it should be noted, the premium collector's edition, my understanding is it's only available through Bandai Namco's website. And there's only like 6,000 of them that have been produced. So once they're gone, they are gone and they are not making more. So those will be very hard to get a hold of. Um, People do I swear to God, you, if, helmets, pit boys, you put that in a yeah. collector's edition, it's over. You're crazy yeah. for it. Fuck the statues. Uh, fuck the, fuck the soundtrack. If you give someone a helmet, they can wear. Well, you remember how, you remember how hyped people were when they announced the fallout four collector's edition with the pit boy oh, on yeah. the arm. They yeah. can put your phone in with the companion app. People forget there was a companion app that could like active or uh, I think it had the map and like your inventory. You could actually use that to control uh, on screen what was going on. Just like a cool idea. It was a total like cheaply made piece of garbage, but it was a cool idea. Oh yeah. Um, That's all you need for these special editions. It's just a neat idea or something because from software is so much about that design. People love the look of it. If you can give them just a piece of that to put on their shelf, Fuck, man, it's going to solve I mean, will, no problem. And then it, it can't go too far. Like I showed Cammy, I think, the uh, collector's edition yeah, of Far Cry 6. That wasn't too far. That was that, just She right. knew what I was talking about before I even brought it up. <laughs> so I was like, excited. I think I showed Cammy. She's like, yes. Do you know yes, you I'm going to see what this is. And I okay. want it. He was like, I don't know what to do with it. And I was like, oh, I can give you some suggestions. It's amazing. Oh, what the? It's pretty. The gun. Yeah, it's a flamethrower, and it is. I'm not joking. This big. Oh, that's awesome! Amazing. That's exactly awesome. correct. I like, love stuff I, like I that. I have these like yeah. glass shell, or these like glass display cases behind me in the studio that are like a foot by a foot by a foot. They're like I got them specifically because most collector's editions come with a statue that's within that foot cubed size range which everyone agrees is like a good size for a collector's item this thing is so huge it spans both cases when i put it on top of the glass cases it over top it spans both of them so it's cool but i'm just like i don't i don't know what like for i couldn't fit it on this bookshelf i couldn't like it is gigantic it's a good thing to have hang it on the wall like I how you get it. replica swords and stuff hanging on the wall. Yeah, yeah. It it did come with a stand. I guess I could do like a floating shelf, maybe. What are you complaining about? Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a YouTuber. You're I complain about stupid stuff. You're a complainer. That's my job. Um. Okay. Overarching thoughts. Okay. Do we need Jacob, to get? I think you're probably the one that's like most initially excited for this. You were talking a couple weeks ago how you were excited um for Elden Ring. So why don't we have you give us your thoughts after this gameplay? Uh it's it's taking the stuff I liked and adding things from other games I also like while cutting out something that I always hated, which is I know it sounds minimal, but that thing where the horse jumps over the ledge, like the amount of time I've wasted trying to go up mountains on a goddamn horse in The Witcher 3 or Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I was just like thinking like it incentivizes you to fast travel or something. It incentivizes you not to play the game. So streamlining that goes a long way. And if they're able to realize that, if they're able to realize that with the fall damage, like conceptually to me, it's all moving in the right direction for this to be their first step in open world stuff. So two thumbs up. I like, I like just about everything I've seen so far, especially good God. Good God to see this running on the PS5 or a nice new computer. 
It's going to look so goddamn pretty. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah. I, I love I love what I've seen. Good. Next. Cammy, your your thoughts. I'm like I'm kind of in the middle. And I don't know how much of that is to do with like my lack of knowledge about these games and what makes these games like so beloved because like so much of the stuff I look at and I'm like this doesn't make a lot of sense to me but then hearing you two talk about it and other people it's like I understand that they're clearly doing these things for a reason that I just don't get yet kitten yay um (laughs) distracted by the cat um so I'm kind of in the middle of like I'm interested, but I couldn't tell you anything specific. If that kind of makes sense. It's piqued your interest. Yeah, it's piqued my interest. And I'm like, I want to know more. It looks really cool. There's things about it that I'm like, oh, that's pretty neat. And there's also things about it like, I'm like I just don't get this or I don't know I don't understand what's going on but everyone around me seems very excited about it so I'm like I take it they're being excited for a reason so yeah I'm 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 in the middle my one concern is I've seen so many people get really excited for this people are getting ridiculously hyped I was saying like before we started filming if this keeps escalating, we're getting to cyberpunk levels of hype again, I think. No, so my only hope is it. We're not. You don't think? We're not even fucking close. You don't cyberpunk think? Cyberpunk was a perfect storm of non. You have Keanu Reeves, America's sweetheart, going up on stage. Hell, the world's sweetheart going up on stage <laughs> and saying, <laughs> and saying, no, you're beautiful. To the audience, do you know how fucking hype that got people? This is, bro, you're breathtaking. That's what it is. This is like I get people are hyped for this. I get people are excited, but it's it's borderline uncomparable to what it's that hype behind Cyberpunk. Think? Oh, we had delays after delays after delays. Keanu Reeves is inside the game. They had like this video going around where they're like, a guy lifts up his hand and there's that precipitation on it like you'd see his handprint left because it was cold out and they were like this is it this is the next people thought that was like the next step in video gaming i don't think people think that's yeah what this is i think this is the next step for from software but people thought cyberpunk was the next step for the world of video gaming that's why i'm saying if it continues like we still have four months to go and already i'm seeing people say oh it's game of the year it's going to be game of the year Uh, george rr martin's behind it which granted is nowhere near the same as keanu reeves but like you know it's especially uh, after the ending of game of thrones (laughs) we don't talk about that but it's like bringing people who aren't necessarily into these games into these games like i wasn't bothered about from software games i heard george rr martin was behind this i have a cat hair in my eye uh, I heard George R. R. Martin was behind this and it, it piqued my interest. So I know that even more eyes are going to be on this than maybe they would normally. Hmm. I'm not saying it's at cyberpunk levels yet. I'm not saying it will get to cyberpunk levels, but I'm saying there is potential for it to get to cyberpunk levels. And I just hope that it will then live up to that hype that people have. I think within the soulsborne community it is getting to like insane sycophantic levels already which i think is why you're seeing some people going game of the year yeah which is patently ridiculous when you look at what else is launching next year the it's idea that one year. game definitely has it locked down is ridiculous like you have starfield coming from one of the most successful published or companies ever in the video game space some of the most awarded games ever released are from that studio they're launching their next game their first game in what will at that point be seven years um and i know fall 76 blah, 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 that, that was technically separate with bgs austin but um then we have 
of course, like God of War Ragnarok, and we have um, what's another big thing? Suicide Squad and Gotham Knights. Breath of the Wild Two. That's the Wild. Yeah, yeah, that's allegedly launching next year too. Like, there's so many things to say that this has a lockdown is ridiculous, but um, that's always going to be the case with crazy sycophantic fans like we were talking about earlier there's always fans in a community which take things just a little too far and some franchises have and communities have more of those or perhaps more vocal crazy fans um it just depends but in this case like for me it checks a lot of my boxes they've shown off a lot of things that i was worried about and that I wasn't sold on when we saw the initial trailers and things. Um, Namely, I wasn't sure how the open world element would work. I'm glad to see they're taking nods from Breath of the Wild and they're doing a lot of other stuff like crafting systems, shifting how you level up abilities and gear and things um, and tying it to exploration. That all bodes well. Um, Lachlan is fussing. Um, So there's a lot of things that they do well that I think could work out well. Hey, buddy. Um, But that being said, there's also things that cause concern where I'm not sure how they'll work out, like the co-op element and all of this stuff that they seem to be leaning into very heavily. But probably what has me the most excited is the idea of these catacombs and dungeons because my favorite part of Bloodborne was the Chalice Dungeons. And the chalice dungeons are freaking fantastic, but most people didn't play them, like at all. They just didn't. What? what? Oh fuck! <laughs> I just for some reason in my head I just put. I imagined you fucking like taking him, and just like you're going through all this stuff, and he's just like looking at you. And then it popped into my head. I was like, oh, is he going to nurse the baby while he's doing it when he comes back around? <laughs> and that image was in my head. And it was really funny. It, in my head, I was just thinking, oh, <laughs> we should draw a really stupid stick image or caricature of Luke in the chair while he's gone. And then I kept picturing that. And then I looked at Jacob and he'd lost it. Well, and then yeah. I started thinking Your about audio what was happened. coming through so well, too. I was like, it was, really? it was like perfect. It's like you stepped off screen at the same level. I was like, what the? F- how is he doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god and then i got thinking about what happened before we started filming and i just yeah lost for those it. of you not aware before we started filming Locke took a poop that lasted like a steady 15 seconds we all heard it it um, was very steady... loud and very clear yeah yeah so that's the context but um mm. the chalice dungeons were fantastic and most people didn't play with them because they were communicated super poorly. They were like, oh, it's a dynamically generated series of caves and hallways. And then there's occasional like little reskin bosses from the base game, which isn't actually true. Like there are bosses in the Chalice Dungeons that aren't in the base game of Bloodborne that are exclusive to the Chalice Dungeons that never made it into the base game because they were cut or they were just for the dungeons. And they offer some of the best challenge, some of the most fun fights, like, and it's just in the dungeon. So it's, it's like an actual arena focused on the bosses. And they've said that that's what they're doing here. Cause uh, Elden ring is going to have the lands between. So there will be six main areas. Each of the main areas has a series of bosses uh, attached to them in like the end castles or um, whatever the set pieces are. And then there are dungeons in each of the six lands, and the dungeons have their own bosses. And the dragon we saw in the trailer looks to have attacked the player while they were just exploring out in one of the fields. So that suggests to me dynamic boss encounters while exploring the open world, which is something Breath of the Wild did very well. Um, So there's all these things that are adding up where I'm like, this could work, This, this could flow. But it's also built on slight speculation because we don't know if the dungeons that they're putting in will have bosses to the extent that the Chalice Dungeons did. We don't know if the dynamic boss encounters are actually 
dynamic boss encounters. Or if that's just like when you're in that area of the map, then the boss triggers and it's basically just like a big arena, like from the last <laughs> games. We don't know a lot of that stuff. I know, we don't. Um, <laughs> so we're just inferring a lot of this stuff, but it's starting to look like, okay, I can see the vision. I can see where they were going with this. And that's what gets me excited. So like the broader point in this video I'll be making is while I'm not like sold, you shouldn't pre-order the game. Um, at least not yet. You shouldn't pre-order it. I, I can understand why people are hyped now. I see the vision. I don't think anybody saw the vision before this. I think they were just blindly hyped up. But now I think it's justifiable to be excited because we've seen enough of it where we can understand what the game, what form the game is taking. Um, I will say there are like Fextra, um, I forget his full name, but it's, I think it's Fextra something. Uh, he makes a lot of like Bloodborne, basically Soulsborne from software content. He made a video that was just titled why you should buy or why you should pre-order Elden Ring after this reveal. And amazingly enough, it had like a 50% down vote uh, ratio, which I didn't expect. I expected most people to be like, yeah, it's great. Because Cyberpunk, even at its peak, people were agreeing that you should pre-order it. It's the one case when you can pre-order and be confident about it. But uh, you shouldn't do that ever. You shouldn't just blindly pre-order something. Even now, we don't know a lot of details. But my point is, it's okay to be excited because we understand the vision now. There's a lot of games with great vision that fall apart in execution, as we saw with Cyberpunk um, and many other games, to be fair. But the point is, when you see the vision, you can get excited about the vision. You shouldn't blindly trust that the vision will be executed properly. But I get it now. Is, is my broader point. So I'm excited. I think it looks interesting. I think it's doing a lot of stuff that's cool, but it also is not going to be a Dark Souls. Like I, I don't think it'll feel very Soulsborne. I, I think it, it's going to feel like its own thing in a very marked way. Like even Sekiro felt very different from those games, but which is why different. they haven't good different i exactly. love sekiro good different but i think that's the thing like people initially when they saw sekiro they were like oh it's dark souls in japan no no it's not well we've seen in the last now two releases from uh from soft it seems as though they are trying to escape dark souls and do their own thing that's different and unique borrow some of the same things but stands on its own and so Sekiro did that, and now Elden Ring's going to try and do that and be its own thing. And I hope they pull it off. Um, but again, we just have to wait and see. Don't pre-order the game. Don't pre-order anything. We don't what know a yet. dumb and, concept. It's well, especially because their pre-order bonus for pre-ordering the base version is that you'll get a digital guide for the game. With and one tricks. guess. Oh, and just, right. Like, what? I meant to say this before that digital deluxe edition. That's a mm. pretty solid bargain right there. Cause I would never, normally they would do that just with the soundtrack, but a, a from software art book, even if it's just digital. Yeah. They're both digital. That's pretty, well, that's we'll, pretty sick. We'll see like I, with uh, death stranding, they also, for the director's cut, they had the art book as well. Um, except it was about 12 pages of just some, some art that they thrown together, but it was an art book. I have the full art book that's like this thick um, and like this big. It's huge and it's beautiful, but that's the actual art book. So like, don't, for people watching, like don't expect to get that 400 page art book with any sort of digital deluxe or whatever. Usually they're just taking pages out of a licensed book that they allowed somebody else to create and uh, they still want to sell those those art books and i think they're worth it like there's some amazing stuff in those i heavily recommend picking up those art books but if it um, is straight up just a scan of that 40 page physical art book you get with the collector's edition it's a steal buy it that's the version you should yeah. get because that's worth your money if it's not if it's fuck them get the regular pages. version even if it's just 10 pages i think that's still 
I don't know, 10 Pretty pages good. for what's it? 20 bucks more for us. If you got the, the full, if you got the full if thing, the that's a steal. Is- if you get the full thing, it's still. But the soundtrack's pretty good. Oh, well, yeah. From just the music gonna, I've heard. So you're not going to be able to play it at like a Tom Sutter party. always has great sound. Yeah. So, <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, 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 oh. I have another uh, finger sandwich. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. hey, would you look at that? That brings us to the end of our Elden Ring talk, and we've been at it for almost an hour. Um, I mean... Do we want to talk about the other things? I just threw them in there. Cause... I'm gonna I'm gonna veto one of them, but we can talk about Animal Crossing real quick. Uh, actually, we'll touch on it real quick. <laughs> Call of Duty Vanguard released. Anyone played it? I straight up nope. forgot. Yeah, I forgot. It's it launched. garbage. They're yeah. just giving people garbage. I cannot believe there are people out there that are that we talk about Hideo Kojima like apologists and from software apologists. How about these fucking idiots that keep buying this stuff? You want to well, talk about apologists? Like I, Holy crap. It's like I bring it up all the time. Like people don't understand the scale. Like we talk about video games all the time, but they're the overwhelming majority of gamers are people that buy one to two games a year. And mostly it's like a copy of Madden or FIFA. And the latest Call of Duty or Battlefield game. That's all they buy. And they buy the newest version of each every year, um, year in, year out. And it's bizarre to us because that's so antithetical to how we operate. But that's what most gamers do, which is why these things like every Call of Duty sells like 20 million copies. Every copy of Madden and FIFA, tens of millions of copies. I know it's infuriating. Um, Yeah. Uh, But that's that's just how it works so like even though the latest call of duty is objectively okay a thrown together mess yeah it's it's basically just an excuse to do a reskinned uh war zone map and to sell exclusive operators and guns to people like that's the only reason they're launching it and it's gonna work because like they're even doing the, the new map in war zone will launch a day early if you own vanguard so all of these wannabe people who want to be streamers like nick Merckx and tim the tap man they're gonna buy it to try and play it the day early to get that exclusive content i know yeah it's you know he's getting worked up he's upset about it too we'll call it there yeah yeah he's vanguard so, sucks he's looking at something so passionately or he was there's not really anything for you to look at. Oh, hey, just Kenny, talk about, talk about Animal Crossing. We'll, we'll okay. Get into Calm down with Animal Crossing. It's so good. It's so good. I cannot... Okay. So the update came a day early. Don't know why. They just said, here, have it a day early, which I appreciated a lot. It was very kind of them. And then the DLC came out um, Friday. So the day it was expected. Again, I was saying before we started filming, I don't remember the last time a DLC came out and I went from really not playing a game to all of a sudden playing it for several hours straight. It's so good. To me, the DLC is completely worth the money. I was going to say like, but I guess it only if it works for you, that play style. Like, if you're into decorating houses and all that kind of stuff. But what else is really in Animal Crossing? I don't know. So I'm pretty sure it's, like, a good DLC for everyone. I think it's really good. Um, And there's just so much to it. Like, obviously, this is the last update, so it was going to be a, a big boy. But there is so much that I'd, like, so many reasons to get back into playing it. So I think even if even if you don't want to buy the DLC, which, you know, is fine. I think it's worth it. But if you don't, that's fine. Whatever. You do you. But I think even if you just have the update, it's worth going back to Animal Crossing for the update. That's my opinion. Well said. I agree. Thank you. I got back into Animal Crossing recently. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Of course, I am able to enjoy it. I would not be, if I was still going to work, if I was still able to go to work, 
I probably would not have touched Animal Crossing until the update came out. But I played it before because mm. I had nothing else to do. And I've been yeah. I've been digging it. I've been liking it all right. It's really good. Yeah. Really good. I think everything is working. Everything that was promised is here and it's working as expected. Um not really much more to add that's you, all there is to have it. you have you bought the dlc no okay i just want um, i won't do anything with it oh that's fair i was gonna say because like n that way we have like two experiences one person with the dlc and one without without i, really like I give it two thumbs up just like elden ring with i give it two thumbs up well yeah I don't think Luke will be back for the outro. I don't. The baby was baby was done. Yeah, it's hey, oh, he's oh. just in time. Yay! He's muted himself. There I, we go. He he's just on his blanket right now for a minute. I have probably thirty seconds. Um, yeah. Who? I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> he's like who? Uh, well, sweet. Yeah. No, I. I'm glad we got to do this, everybody. Great job. Thanks, everybody, for watching. You guys are scholars and saints. Goodbye, dear we friends. We love you very much. Oh. Bye. See you later, Hogarth. <laughs>